Hey guys, so today we're going to be working on the Infiltrator Squad from the Shadow Spear box set. So one of the new Vanguard uh, Space Marine units. Um, they are in Phobos armor as well. Uh, they have Infiltrators, the Infiltrator Helix Adept, and the Infiltrator Sergeant. Okay, The unit contains one Sergeant, four Infiltrators, and it can include up to four additional infiltrators and an infiltrator helix adept um, for an extra six power. Each model is armed with a marksman bolt carbine, a bolt pistol, a frag, and crack grenades. So the marksman bolt carbine, the 24 inch range, rapid fire one, strength four, AP zero, damage one. So pretty much your standard bolter. Except each unmodified hit roll of a six made for this weapon's attacks automatically hits and result in a wound. You do not make a roll for the wound. That's pretty cool. So you're having the good fortune of bypassing another dice roll, which is always good. Uh, abilities, they should know no fear. Combat squads, that means if you have 10 of them, you can split them in two five mans. Concealed position, basically that deep strike roll again, uh, which is good. That's during your deployment. Uh, Omni scramblers, uh, enemy units that are set up on the battlefield as reinforcements cannot be set up within 12 inches of this unit. That's pretty powerful. Again, it negates your heavy flamer deep strike, your rapid fire deep strike. Um, it controls more of the board for that kind of stuff. Uh, your helix adept. At the end of the movement phase, a helix adept can attempt to heal or revive one model from that unit. So, if the unit contains no wounded models, but has more of its models that have been slain during the battle on our D6 on a 5 plus, one slain model is returned with one wound. If, able, if it fails, uh, he can't shoot during the next shooting phase as he recovers a gene seed, which is okay. And, and then if the infiltrator uh, contains a wounded model, that model automatically gains one lost wound, which is pretty awesome, considering they do have two base wounds because they're primaries. Uh, next thing they have is smoke grenades. Once per battle, instead of shooting any weapons in the shooting phase, this unit can use its smoke grenades. Until the next shooting phase, your opponent must subtract one from hit rolls for attacks made with ranged weapons against the target unit. Now, you're not going to use that ability when you have a 10-man squad. You're going to use that ability when you're down to like one or two men, and you're trying to hold an objective for late game, so it's not that bad. Um, again, Infantry, Phobos, Primaris, Infiltrator Squad. That's what we got here. Again, we have the really nice uh, AutoCAD style um, blueprints, different color components for the new pieces and old pieces. Pretty nice. And this is on sprue A from that box set. Um, it does look to be some repeated components uh, for the guys. We have some twins in here. But we're going to go ahead and start off um, A31. Uh, yeah, these guys, they seem very in interesting, but I do fear they might cost a little much for what they do. Um, and then again, they keep coming up with new bolters, which is kind of crazy. But these guys with the new beta, uh bolter rule, uh, they can put out some hurt really quick. Alright, first component, A31. Looking for A30. A30. And this is a fairly large sprue. So, I'm trying to keep it all on camera for you as I move around it. Okay, A30, A31, A34. It's a bolter with a sling. It's not too new. We've seen that before. That's one of the things that's kind of weird about this squad too. They have a lot of emphasis on the uh, pistols that they have. Um, unfortunately, they're just regular bolt pistols. They're not the heavy bolt pistol, which I would have liked to see them get. But who knows? Maybe down the road, right? that heavy bolt pistol has some good promise. All right, so the guy we're putting together right now is the sergeant character. Okay. So, A33. 
There's that bolt pistol. A36. Kind of neat. They, they did that sprue connectors on top of the power plant again. I'm worried about these antenna type pieces. I think these guys are going to have a rough time in transport. But we'll see. A35. Oh, they're saying that's an alternative for the. Uh, for the gun. Oh no, I see how they're doing that. That's kind of cool. So this actually goes on on top of the sling after the fact. That's kind of a neat component. All right, so that's all the components there for the infiltrator sergeant. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven components of this guy. So a little bit less than the HQ pieces, which is good. Gonna start running around. And cleaning up these sprue connectors and mold lines, getting them tidied up. <laughs> Again, just using the edge of a hobby knife or exacto blade and just running along perpendicular you know, to the way you would normally cut. And that cleans them up pretty nice. Always, always, always. You may not see these connector points, but if it's a piece that's going to be a gluing surface, like underneath the head or an arm joint or something like that, you want to make sure that you get this fairly smooth because that could affect how it, it builds down the road, right? And then they got this one hidden in his hair. You should get a little bit of leeway with those because the hair will kind of kind of hide them, but. Still kind of sucks that's right along the top of the model. Alright. It's most of the times so that's where we look, right? <laughs> when we're looking down on our models. Hmm. Maybe I'm crazy. I need to go take a look at my uh my Reaver Marines, but this pistol looks like a like a heavy pistol from that kit. Kind of intriguing. I mean, you could do that later on just to see. <laughs> yeah, I just use that blade and I blow off the dust. And keep on rolling. Pretty cool. There's our shoulder joint. I think on the the next set I get, I'm going to play around with cutting off all the components and seeing what kind of um, customization I can do to these models. Because I really don't want an entire force all looking the same, you know. Kind of got stuck with that with the uh, the Dark Vengeance box, which, you know, a little unfortunate, but I get it. It happens. The main body. Again, these are pretty much monopose kits. All right, just the way that they are slotted. Now they're gorgeous positioning, but if you're going to be somebody who's, you know, purchasing more than one of them, that's going to make your your hobby a little bit more difficult. 
you know, and it's funny because I hear a lot of people complain about the monopose blister boxes or blister marines like the HQ choices and but no one's really noticed that they're all kind of becoming <laughs> monopose models. You know, the old marine boxes, they weren't the most dynamic pieces, but you could bit mash some pretty cool stuff out of them and you know, with a little time and effort, you know, you could have a truly, you know, custom looking force with just a couple boxes. Yeah, I kind of feeling that's gone away a little bit. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, you can tell me otherwise, but <laughs> I am sensing that's kind of becoming a trend, you know. And uh, I don't know. And if that is becoming a trend, I'd like to see him think about the modelers and maybe come out with some like <laughs> upgrade sprues that kind of go in line with them, so we can at least change things up a bit. I, mean, I can almost guarantee too that when these guys <laughs> come out in their own boxes, there's going to be different weapon options. There's going to be you know, a good bit more customization. This almost always is, right? Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure that Suppressor Squad is going to get something other than auto cannons. You know, they're probably going to get, like, a LAS cannon or a Melta type equivalent. You know, maybe not LAS cannon because that's, like, a, a long range type thing, but maybe, uh, maybe a Melta type thing. You know, <laughs> sneak behind enemy lines and take out some heavy units. I mean, that would be something that this unit or this, this army is lacking and it'd be pretty fluffy you know <laughs> that's what most shock troops would do you know, get in there get behind enemy lines take out high value targets you know your HVTs <laughs> like the old uh, old stern guard used to do right before uh, the drop pod got taken out back and put down like old yeller F in the chat for uh, for drop pods. Wah, wah. But they pretty much gave the drop pod rule to everything that deep strikes. So I don't think anybody would need them. Unless you really wanted a unit that doesn't have a way to deep strike to deep strike. I mean, that's most of the dreadnoughts, but. They can't even take the drop pod anymore. So, what that is, is Games Workshop looked at their sales and said, eh, we sell a lot of drop pods. Everybody has already got them. Let's make another unit that people need to buy. All right, there's our components. Let's run through these instructions and get this guy together, huh? So we're starting with the body and our front piece. Go ahead and dry fit them together. Looks like I missed a little bit of flashing or sprue connecting there. Clean off the tip. In place. Drop that body in. Okay. Next. Like the way that that sits. These guys are there's a ten man squad you get in this box, and uh, just looking at you know the number of components, right, and the way that they 
kind of slot together. I feel even with 10 of them in this box, putting them together, still going to go fairly fast. All right. Which is good for us. I'm doing this with the glue, I'm just using the smallest dot to get the job done. Alright. I want to clean that up just a little more now that I'm looking at it. <laughs> What's really cool is the amount of detail that these models have on them. You know, we're not even done yet, but this guy's looking pretty awesome. He's got his straps, he's got his pouches, his belts, you know, some heraldry or award type things going on. We got that oh so important. Let's see how they want this going together. Bolt pistol. Like I'd say, I'd really like to see Primaris units gain access to, you know, power fists on the sergeants or things of that nature. All right, especially units like this. Yeah, these types of units, they're gonna go in behind enemy lines. They're gonna get up close and personal with the enemy. Yet they pretty much completely lack any sort of close combat capabilities. Which, you know, that's kind of rough. At least the sergeant would be, you know, a deterrent. But as it currently stands, not so much. There he is, one infiltrator squad sergeant. Look at that guy. It's pretty bad, uh, badass looking, if you ask me. Got the little computer there on his wrist, so he can communicate with his squad. We see him using like hand gestures to relay commands. Again, that's kind of the stealthy aspect of it. All right, got his pouches, his holster. That power plant, the slung bolter with his special optics. All in all, a fairly cool looking little model, right? Yeah, I think I think the smoke grenades when it comes to late game are be pretty unique. Um, I love the Omni Scrambler. Those Omni Scramblers, I think those are really going to play uh, some unique. Um, challenges towards any kind of opponents we get, you know, um, helps counter a lot of that deep striking shenanigans. And then that Helix Adept, I really like that. I wish that that was something that you could, you know, move around from squad to squad, but he can only really heal other infiltrators. So kind of a missed opportunity there, but all in all, I'm liking this kit a lot. Uh, we got nine more to go <laughs> and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Take care.